There's a lot of conversations at the moment around concerns for the um, average amount of testosterone that men have got, estrogens in the water and stuff like that. Should we be worried? How, that's, how that's worried like should we be? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I just recently came back from Copenhagen. I was there to give a talk for the Lundbeck Foundation, and there was another talk that the Lundbeck Foundation put on. They do a great popular science series um, called Coffee and Cocktails. I'm not a drinker, but people, it's so European. It's, it's so different than over here. In was the everybody States. smoking outside? No one was smoking, but people would bring, were allowed to bring in real glasses with ice in them. And yet the auditorium was silent. This was a big concert. It's in the concert hall in Copenhagen. It's a very beautiful venue. And you couldn't hear an ice cube chink the entire night. No clink, clink, clink. No, no chinking of the ice cubes. People were in there with their cocktails and enjoying, enjoying science. And earlier that week, there was a talk by uh, Dr. Shana Swan. She wrote a book called Countdown. Uh, she went on Joe Rogan's podcast, um, I believe earlier last year. She talked about the decline of sperm counts from the 1930s until now and ties it in a very, re she's a serious researcher with National Institutes of Health grants, et cetera, ties this to um, the increasing presence of phthalates, the most difficult word to pronounce in the English language besides ophthalmology, phthalates that are present, main, present mainly in pesticides. If you look at sperm counts and testosterone levels in males in different areas of the United States, they are significantly lower in areas where there's a lot of pesticide use, in rural areas where there's a lot of farming and pesticides. Very serious issue. And in the offspring of mothers that ingest phthalates, there's this, the anogenital distance is what they study in the lab. The what? The anogenital distance, literally the distance between the base of the scrotum and the, um, and the anus in males is much greater than it is in I can't uh, females. That there's a word for that. Females don't have a scrotum, obviously. So they measure from the base of the genitals to from the base of the vagina to the, to the anus. In males, they go from the base of the scrotum. It depends on the study. Sometimes it's the top of the scrotum. Um, you know, I always say, you know, uh, you always have to be careful when people are measuring anything related to genitalia because somebody's going <laughs> to cheat in the measurement. So, um, so in any event, I don't know how they controlled for that, but she shows these remarkable pictures in mice and in humans of people that are exposed or mice that are exposed to phthalates. And basically males are showing the more female-like pattern of of anogenital distance when they're exposed to these phthalates in utero. Okay, this is not post-birth. This is in utero. The mother's being exposed. It crosses the blood placental barrier. What's happening? Well, this is reducing sperm counts. Now, what can people do about this? Well, first of all, there's this question of whether or not phthalates are having a similar effect after a child is brought into the world. One doesn't know, but we do know, and this is, goes back to my early graduate work was on the effects of androgens like testosterone and DHT on different traits of brain and body. We know that, for instance, it just very briefly that, that during pregnancy, the brain is organized male by way of, believe it or not, testosterone converted to estrogen through a process called aromatization. But the growth of the penis, the fact that there even will be a penis, et cetera, is set by a, a testosterone called DHT, dihydrotestosterone. Testosterone converted DHT through 5-alpha reductase and on and on and on. That's an organizing effect on the system, as they call it. But then there's an activating effect where during puberty, the testes just start producing testosterone. Some is converted to DHT, and the DHT is what creates the growth of the penis. Okay? In people that inject phthalates during puberty and in the post-puberty years, it's conceivable that those phthalates could inhibit the activating effects of androgens, not just what we call the organizing effects of androgens early in life. Okay, why is this interesting and important? Well, sperm counts are definitely going down. Are they going down so much so that people are incapable of reproducing? Probably not because, you know, as they told us in school, it just takes one and indeed it just takes one sperm, but it is a probability. It's a numbers game, right? The reason, you know, I, people that take anabolic steroids, unless they do things to offset the effect on their own testosterone and sperm production, sperm counts are down. So the probability of, of successful insemination is of, of the egg is reduced also. It's a numbers game. So it just takes one, but having many improves the probability that the one will be able to fertilize. So the short answer is yes, I think it is very concerning. Now, which things should we be concerned about? My understanding of the literature, and here I'm not an I'm now venturing to territory for which I'm certainly not an expert, is that things like plastics that have BPAs, 
may be a concern. Drinking water may be a concern, but the most serious or enriched source of BPAs are things like printed receipts. I was out for dinner the other night. It was probably about a month and a half ago, and the server came over, and I reached for the receipt. And as I was going for it like this, one of the girls who I'd never met before, she's a creator online, hit my hand away. I was like, are you really going to touch that? And this is the first time I've ever heard about this. Yeah. This is legit. Yeah, printed receipts are are a a, a rich source of BPAs. And um, topically, that could come through the yeah, skin? Yeah, it could go transdermally. I mean, now, you'd probably have to handle a lot of receipts. I mean, I don't think you're going to handle... if you're a checkout cashier, perhaps, this would be the cash- sort of thing. Definitely checkout cashiers. And listen, it, it's going to vary. Some people are operating with a testosterone level and sperm count that's already back on its heels, so to speak. Some people have abundant testosterone and sperm. So it is really gonna depend on the individual. I don't think people should get paranoid or delusional about any of this. But just don't start sleeping in a bed of receipts. Don't start sleeping in a bed of receipts. That's an interesting one. There are all sorts of jokes that could be made about that (laughs) one um, that I won't make. But there, there are also some other things like, you know, do a little bit of online research about phthalates and don't go to fringe sites. Go to Dr. Shana Swan's website, right? I believe she's at Mount Sinai or one of the other larger medical schools in New York. Go to her website. She's a legitimate researcher and see what's there. See what the sources of phthalates are. Pesticides. Does that mean you should only eat organic fruits and vegetables? Maybe. I don't know which pesticides people are using on which fruits and vegetables, right? So there's some research that needs to be done. But the moment we start talking this way and people start saying, oh, wow, this is really like hippie science. This isn't hippie science. This is serious NIH funded researcher saying phthalates before birth can dramatically alter the trajectory of, of the male's ability to make sperm and testosterone. Phthalates in puberty may be able to do that, but we know that, that androgens, in particular DHT and testosterone converted to estrogen have a powerful role in masculinizing the brain and body during those years. Why wouldn't people be, you know, do half an hour of research online? Or for instance, the abundant data that melatonin suppresses pregnant, uh, excuse me, suppresses puberty. And yet people will take melatonin like it was, you know, insane, the, insane levels. physiological levels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I saying melatonin is going to suppress your puberty? If you took it as a kid, you're messed up. No. And yet it's very easy to replace it with some of the healthier alternatives that are out there. So I think that one can have a, a thoughtfulness about this stuff and it's a and it's action oriented without having to really freak out about it. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.